Right then everybody, welcome back to the channel. First and foremost, this is going to be my match reaction to the draw with Wolves yesterday in the FA Cup. But before, and I'm going to go on a little bit of a tangent before that about a few other things. But if you're new here, please subscribe to the channel if you like everything that's going on over here and you keep up to date with it. Give this video a like if you enjoy it and also put a comment down below so I know your thoughts on everything that's been going on. So, let's start with the game, shall we? Well, not really. So, Wolves deserved to win last night in my opinion. We basically got by because the lineman flagged up which for the offside, which was for Mateus Nunes, if I'm not not wrong there, basically. You know, when he took the free kick, uh, the corner, sorry, he was still offside when the ball came back to him. But we got away with that. If the linesman had not flagged it, VAR would not have pulled it back, just like when we played Arsenal and their goal should have been disallowed for offside. I don't understand how, in an age now where technology is everywhere, that we've got this big important technology that's supposed to be a part of our game in life you know the footballing world and we don't have every blade of grass covered by VAR it doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever it really doesn't but back to Liverpool something has to change guys it really does you know we went away to Dubai the media weren't allowed to go in you know during training sessions and film anything this made people think that it was all about the ownership that people were visiting the hotel that had something to do with that region to buy the club but in all seriousness, guys, I don't think anything's changed at all and we didn't do anything over there in Dubai. I thought we might have come back out of it with like potentially a new formation, new style of play, have the defensive line a bit further back because we don't have the legs in midfield, you know, so to compensate for that. But no, it does. we've got worse since the World Cup break, in my opinion. You know, we've got lucky with a few wins. We beat Leicester due to them scoring two own goals. Their first goal, their only goal, should I say, sorry, where they went straight through the middle of the team, was just a case in point of how bad this midfield and this team has become under Jurgen Klopp. And now I've seen some comments in some of my videos calling for Jurgen to be sacked and I'm not there and I don't think I'll ever get there just yet because Jurgen's got a lot of credit in the bank for me just with how he changed things around. And he remember that phrase he said, I'm going to turn doubters into believers. And we all started believing. We all started believing, Jurgen. But now due to your stubbornness and FSG unwilling to invest in this squad... We are going back from believers into doubters because I am doubting anything to do that we can pull anything off this season now. I think the season's gone. The sooner the season ends, the better. And I just hope that we finish off in the Champions League positions because if not, God help us in the summer transfer window. You can forget about Jude Bellingham in all seriousness. But Jürgen has kind of started changing things around. In his post conference for this game last night he actually started putting blame at the players doors you know I've been sick of all these excuses that he's been coming out with of why we've lost games last night he literally put the blame at the players door saying that they were just not winning any challenges which is correct we were so we, 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 as a team as a midfield we're just so soft now where's the Fabinho gone that would pick up a yellow card for just stopping a counter-attack you know, I think Thiago did it in the last game. It shouldn't be Thiago that's doing it. Like, Fabinho is our defensive midfielder. He should be the one that's picking up these petty yellow cards for breaking down play and stopping counter-attacks. You know, it was only a couple of seasons ago. Like, no matter how good and technically gifted Man City's players were, we would always beat them due to our tenacity and power in midfield. But we've just grown so soft. And I've seen a lot of comparisons between Jurgen Klopp now and Arsene Wenger, when he started going towards leaving Arsenal. You know when Arsenal were on that, um, it was when I was younger actually, to be fair, and they had the big midfield of Patrick Vieira, Petit, Silva, you know, big midfielders, strong midfield with presence. And then they started coming away from that and going towards the technically gifted midfielders like Rosicki and stuff like that. Arsenal didn't win anything again. And that's kind of how we're going now. We've got Fabinho, we've got Elliot, Cavalio, Thiago. Like, we've never replaced Genie Wijnaldum who was somebody who most Liverpool fans didn't rate because he did the dirty work that nobody bothered about. People were all bothered about Mane and Salah and stuff like that. But when Alden was the one that was, was the grease for the cogs that kept them going, and we've not replaced that in midfield at all. You know, how does Cavalio feel now? Fabio Cavalio, just to go on to something else. You know, he knows that there's players that are playing now whose contracts are ending in the summer, and they're playing over him, getting more minutes than him. His confidence has got to be shot. Why was Oxley chamberlain playing out on the left-hand wing when we had, before Gakpo came in? It should have been Cavalio, not the Ox. 
Oxford being midfield as an option. That's where he's been prominently playing for us for the past couple of seasons. Put the Ox in midfield. Put Cavalier out in the wing. Give the kids some minutes. He should be sat there thinking, why have I come and joined Liverpool from Fulham? I could have gone elsewhere. But, as I said, Jürgen did call the players out last night and now he needs to turn on FSG and he needs to start asking for more investment. We don't need it in the summer. We need it now. If we wait till the summer, we're not going to get the players and Jude Bellingham that everybody's going on about that we're going to sign. We're just not going to sign them because if we don't make Champions League football, we will take a cut out of our transfer budget. So all these rumours about Liverpool having 200 to 250 million to spend in the summer window that came out from that journalist from Sport Build, you can kiss that goodbye. Honestly, like, when have we ever spent that anyway? And without Champions League football, we'll be lucky if we get 50 million. Honestly. We'll be, get, we'll be signing James Milner to a new contract, you watch. So, to go back onto the midfield, though, quickly before I move on to the game... I don't. I think, in all honesty, I don't think we could sign any one midfielder now, and it's gonna change it for us. I think the problems run a lot deeper now, and I don't really have the answers for that because I'm not the coach, I'm not the manager, but we are just poor all over now. But for me, we need to sign a new DM and another box-to-box midfielder now. Otherwise, I can't see us getting any better and challenging for the top four and potentially challenging for the Champions League. You know, we've got Declan Rice at West Ham. West Ham are struggling this season. They really are. Why don't we just go in there and see if we can get him? Like, surely might, his price potentially could have come down a little bit. Go snap him up. Stick him in at the base of our midfield. You know, it's going to be expensive, but it's tough. The football transfer market has changed. Gone are the days where FSG think they can go and sign players for 20 million. 40 million is the new 20 million now. You know, inflation's gone up. Do they just don't think, you know, we're all struggling in everyday lives. Do they not think that the price has gone up in the transfer market as well to compensate for that? Everything's gone up in price. But Fabinho, for me, is done. We need someone else to come in and take over that DM role. We really do. Or somebody to come in and at least give him a kick up the arse. And so he's got to try and improve. Either he's let he's ran we've ran him too far last season with all the games we've played, or he just doesn't feel challenged anymore because he knows that no matter what, as long as he's fit, he's gonna play. I mean we need to put the pressure on FSG guys. Like look what's happened over at the Red Sox, Red Sox in Boston. The fans have put pressure on FSG, like John Henry got booed at the stadium. And now what have they done? They've approved a deal worth three hundred and thirty one million for an extension for one player. Now, yeah, that's over 11 years. So if you were to break that down, you're looking at like 30 million a year, right? But we don't sign players for that long in football. We sign players for like five years. So you'd just double that, wouldn't you? So that's 60 million a year they've put to one side for one player for the Red Sox. Don't tell me they they do not have money. They have got money. They're just living on this little dream that we have to self-sustain ourselves. You know... Has Chelsea, Real Madrid, Man City all been pulled for putting money into the club? No. FSG could put... You know, I'm not even asking for hundreds of millions. Just put 50 million in towards what we've already got and go sign this Casado kid and potentially sign a cheaper midfield as well who's just going to run about. Because that's what we need. We just need someone who's going to run around and be a pest to other teams to stop so to block the passing routes, make it harder for teams to get through us. But us as a fan base need to start putting the pressure back on FSG. You know, yes, they've built, expanded the new stands for us. Yes, they've developed the new training facility for us. Yes, we've won a lot of trophies under them, but football's changing. It's always changing. It's always evolving. As I said previously, 40 million is the new 20 million now. There's inflation in the world. Prices have gone up. FSG need to shut up and put up now or just sell the club. Because I personally think that all this news about them wanting an, an investor and this, that, and other. It's all just games. They want to sell the club, but they're trying to get as much for it as possible. It's so annoying when you see them putting all that money into Red Sox. It really is, guys, when you break that down over the football contract season. The amount of money that we should have had spent on us. And that's just for one player as well, guys. $331 million on one player. 
One player, guys. And all we're asking for is 50 million. 50 million to go towards what's already in the kitty already. It's disgusting, it really is. But, you know, that's FSGs. You know, we know where their um, priorities are, basically, I guess. But as I said, we, us as a fan base, nothing's going to change unless we put pressure on them. We did it for Hicks and Gillette. We can do it for these. Let's start now, yeah? So back to this match. Possession-wise, we had 64% of it. We had 10 shots to their 11. We had three of our shots on target, though, guys, against their five. We had the most corners, and we also committed the most fouls, which was a little bit um, of a shock to me, if I'm being perfectly honest with you. I would have thought that <laughs> we didn't really commit as much as all that. But, um, you know, who saw Mateus Nunes come on yesterday as well? Like, I saw him yesterday. Hold on. Let me just um, grab this now. So, Nunes... This player who, to be fair to you, when I saw these stats, has kind of made me eat a little bit of humble pie, a little bit. So he played for 33 minutes yesterday. He completed 100% of his crosses, 80% pass accuracy, 18 touches. He won six of his seven ground duels. He completed three of his four dribbles. He won all of his tackles and he did one key pass. He absolutely brought control to that midfield yesterday. Did you not think? As soon as he came on. I think there was one occasion where he, like, kicked the ball off one of our players head and did a little turn then he took two of our players out of the game you know I think I, I want to know who made the decision not to sign him basically and what that what was the reason behind it if we could go and sign Arthur Mello if we were going to sign Tushimene as well as sign Darwin Nunes as we're led to believe who made the decision not to sign Mateus Nunes in summer and then come up with this idea that we'll give him a year at Wolves and then we'll go sign him for even more money the year after who made that decision? Because that person needs sacking. <laughs> Honestly, they really do. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go on to my match rating now, guys, for the players individually. So I've given Alisson a four. You know, he's got a lot of credit in the bank for me personally. And he did make the mistake for the first goal. But how many times this season have we relied on him? So I'm not going to give him too much stick, to be fair. Trent, I've given him a seven. He had a really good game, to be fair, in all honesty, defensively and attacking-wise. You know, he put in that world-class ball for Darwin to score. So he had a really good game. You know, probably my man at match for us, in all honesty. Centre-backs, Canate and Matic both got a five from me. The the mess up for their second goal, Canate's got to do better than that. Matip, he almost got caught out as well, didn't he? With his pass. You know, there's times where I think we're too busy trying to play out from the back instead of just hoofing it away. You know, we're looking for that pass out to wingers. If it's not there, just kick it downfield. Yeah, we might lose the ball, but then we've got more chance of defending it than we have if you lose the ball in our own box. Just get rid of the ball, guys. Robertson yesterday, give him a six. I think he was decent as well going forward. A little bit lacking defending-wise, but in that first 20-odd minutes at the beginning of the game, I think he was our best outlet in all honesty. It was pretty good. So back onto the midfield. Thiago, five. For me, he's a bit of a luxury player for us now. And unless we get legs around him, we can't get the best out of him. You know, and I think today we it showed where he's lacking. And as the midfield, is lacking as well. Because as you're going to see now with my scores for Fabinho and Henderson, I've given them both fours. They were both poor today, in my opinion. Both poor, both dire. Fabinho's got to do a little bit better throwing himself about. Henderson's not really his fault, like his legs have gone. He's like our new James Milner now, and um, we just need to get someone in on that side at pitch. We really do, as well as the DM, as I've said earlier on in this video. Gakpo, debut, six. You know, he kind of got an assist for Salah's goal, so I'll give him that. He had some good touches. You know, he does seem to lack the pace that we used to out there in Diaz, but he seems to have a little bit better ball control as well and open up a little bit of space, didn't he, for that shot that he had. So I think it'll come with time with Gapo. You know, six, you know, he's, he was all right. Not 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 great, not bad. He was all right. Salah, six. I could have given him a five, though, in all honesty. Like, he scored that goal, which is probably why he's got the six. But in all fairness, I think he had another quiet game. Like, Salah's been so quiet for me. And I think this is down to what I mentioned earlier with our style of play. Is Salah being asked to play a different way from what he's used to playing because of Darwin now? Instead of having a false nine that drops deep, and Salah and Mane, Mane sorry, can go in to the middle. Now we've got like a prominent number nine. Is Salah being asked to stay more out wide? I think that might be the case here, guys. I really, truly do. 
And then da- New- Darwin Nunes, I've given him a seven. You know, his goal was taken well. He was always trying. He was he was always trying to get the ball moving forward. He's got that pace. And in all honesty, as bad as we've been this season, I think Darwin has been like our shining light this season. Yeah, he got himself sent off. Yeah, he's missed tons of chances. But I can't remember how many goals he's got now. I think it's 10 in 20 or something like that, or 23, which is good rating, really. And it's nearly a goal every two games. So he's doing well. But, um, yeah, guys, for me, it's all about we need some sort of investment now. We truly do. And I don't think one one midfielder this window is going to cut it. Let me know your thoughts down below, guys, in the comments. Give this video a like if you've enjoyed it. And if you're new here, subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with everything else I've got going on. And I'll catch you in the next one.